Hi everyone, uh, it's Scrappy Kathy here. Um, this video is for Scrap Squad Sunday, but I'm going to be um, showing it on Saturday as part of the Scrap Backwards first ever um, celebrating six, it was first gonna be celebrating 500 uh, followers and then um, uh, 600 and now we're past 700. So celebrating all of our uh, backwards followers. And um, it's also a Calvin ball layout and it's for the challenge that I'm calling Let's Play Calvin Ball. And it's especially designed to show those of you who haven't tried Calvin Ball how much fun it can be. And those of you who have, it may give you a couple new ideas or you may, you know, scream and yell at the screen and, and say, no, that can't be used as a so-and-so. So we're gonna kind of follow this through and take on my unique perspective on Calvin Ball. And it's going to be a rather unique perspective on this uh, lift. I have assembled the pieces for the photo cluster, kind of the before points, um, although there are a few points in here, the before points part of the layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and what I've done here, I don't know what paper line that is. Um, it was from a paper pad. And of course, you know, I like the colors. So I'm just gonna put that down first. The little um, cap right here, and, and this gets me points. I'll show you in a minute. There, there's a new uh, rule that has been added as of today, and I'm speaking to you on Friday, the 11th. Um, the new rule that has been added is for, uh, to include 10 or more flowers. So the part, so I have to leave, when I assemble the other thing, I have to leave about at least 10 flowers showing on here. So the little um, uh, triangle cap I've kind of just put in place. That also gets me the polka dot point. And I've used Vicki Booten's uh, color study here because that lime green more, most closely matches the lime green in the photo filter that I used. This is, I used two filters from the Prisma application here for this picture of Reese who looks like she's getting ready to, um, I don't know, attack the universe. Uh, she's all freshly groomed and, and cleaned up. So I'm going to kind of put this right here. I've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and easily 10 flowers there. So I'm going to say that my work is done. Now, in the original that we're lifting, there's this cluster of a butterfly and, and a floral. Then there's a title kind of over here and then a, a, a kind of a, um, a piece of ephemera up there. One of the rules that I have, and I'm gonna show you the rules in a minute and kind of how I approach this, is for a doily. And so I've thought since I used this strong dose of black up here, I could use this, the doily down here, kind of maybe tucked in under like that, or even more of it showing. I could either make it a coming out to the, from the side here, and have it be the background for my title, which is gonna be what next, um, or down here in this corner. But if I put it here, it leaves this corner open for some Calvin Ball points. So that's kind of always my, when I'm doing Calvin Ball layouts and I'm trying to stay true to a sketch or to um, a lift, I try to think in terms of places to put the Calvin Ball points. So even if they're goofy and, and not anything that you or I would normally use on a layout, um, it, if you 
kind of group things into clusters or kind of place them around and tucked in. That's why I've separated each of these layers. This is Amy Tangerine, by the way. That's the uh, same paper reversed. And there's a point for more than three pattern papers, which you'll see in a minute. As you can see, I've got five, I think. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. So I think I'm gonna put the, the, um, the doily here just that kind of gives gives him background. I will build a cluster here. I will probably have a cluster here that'll be anchored by this frame. But before I go into much more detail adding Calvin ball points, I want to show you what I've done. Now you get Calvin ball points for a whole slew of different things. For instance, you get publicity points if you make a video or if you post it on uh, various, social, various social media platforms or if you do a, um, uh, a tutorial or a layout share or something like that. And I, I generally, um, and you get a point for, for the, the project itself. For a 12 by 12, you get one point. For a traveler's notebook spread, I think you also get one point. And, and it goes into detail. You can do cards, you can do traveler's notebook, you can do um, mini books, anything you want. And the point structure kind of goes with this. I mostly do 12 by 12s, although I have done and will do. I make it a point to do at least two or three um, uh, art journal pages f during Calvin Bomb. But anyway, I have removed the things like there's put a, put away five layouts. I'm not going to have that, that be part of the challenge. Uh, mail a card, not part of the challenge. Um, there, from the temporary bonus points, the cobweb and spider have been removed, so that's not in there. Uh, I'm not having, uh, let's see. Um, well, basically, all the things that are that you can do on a layout as part of this challenge amount to in the in the temper in the permanent side there are thirty of them on the temporary side, which are ones that as you're playing the game, these can be removed or changed you know as you as you wish in fact, it surprises me that uh only the cobweb and spider have been removed. So there are 32 here. So that's 62 possible points just for your layout. Like I said, for me, uh, you get you get a point for the the layout. There are usually six publicity points that I get. And I clean my desk once a day, and you get a point for cleaning your desk. So I, I generally get a few more than just the layout points. Uh, also, if you go into the gallery and comment on five layouts, I believe it is, you get a point. And there are a few other things. If you're part of the game, you know what I'm talking about. If you're not and you're just in it for this challenge, then we will start. I will read you and you have a list there. This is just, when I read this, it's kind of for my own... Um, reminding myself, did I bring all these things to the table? When I say bring them to the table, I mean put them in this tray so that they're handy. Um, you don't want to see me running around my craft room looking for um, whatever, doing a die cut frame or any of the things that I kind of do ahead of time. Um, and so I, before I do a video with a Calvin ball layout, everything goes in the tray. I've got a, um, w one of the things that you'll, I'll read you in a minute is a cloud and then a vellum is one of the things. So I actually, uh, not a cloud, but a speech bubble. I sometimes cut clouds out. I need to punch this speech bubble out and it's, this um, punch has been catching on the speech bubble part, um, particularly out of materials like vellum. 
So I'm going to kind of cut it. I knew I was going to have to do that, and I should have done it ahead of time. And it me means it's not shaped very well, but I can put something. There's plenty of stuff that I can put over that. Now, another thing that you can see here is as I've punched out these tropical leaves and this butterfly and these clouds, that leaves me something of a stencil. And sometimes when they say use a stencil, I will use a stencil that I've created by punching or die cutting something out. So this goes in my project tray as a possible stencil for future use. I'm not going to use them. I'm going to use a different stencil on this. So let me read. Let me get that off of there. Let me read you the points. Date your project. That's not a problem. When I typed up my journaling, I've put a date there. Vellum, you just saw me punch a speech bubble out of vellum. Avocado, of course, you'll see an avocado. Of course, the, the uh, mascot of Calvin Ball is the avocado, and he's been named Scrapocado, and um, there was a contest to name him. It's, uh, it's, uh, the game itself is based on Calvin and Hobbes, the um, uh, cartoon, and it refers to a game that they developed called Calvin Ball, where the rules change, the rules are never the same from one day to the next, and the rules are set by the players. So every rule that I'm going to read to you was suggested by um, someone who's playing Calvin Ball. And, and so they're, um, Alice Bull kind of sits at the top, and she and her techie son, Joe, are the ones behind the curtain who are making everything run smoothly and um, kind of taking away and adding the rules and picking from the suggestions. But all of these were suggested by players. So there's date your project, vellum, avocado, camera, washi tape, cut file, stamping, birthday, tropical florals and leaves, stencil, arrow, cloud, rainbow shape, frame, star, grid paper, butterfly, heart, ribbon, die cut, flare, and die cut, for example, as we go through, Die cut could mean something that you cut with a die, or it could mean an ephemera die cut that comes in a collection, or any way you want to interpret that. If you have neither, I think if you fussy cut something out with a white edge around it, you can call it a die cut. You can say you created the die with your scissors. There are no Calvin Ball police. Everything is honor system. And as long as you're kind of using up your stash and keeping with the spirit of the game, nobody's going to call you on anything. Flare, and we all kind of know about that. I've got lots of that to play with. Uh, more than three pattern papers. You saw me uh, point to that. Books and reading. Uh, Disney. Glitter. Wood veneer, dinosaur, coffee or tea, typewriter font, and doily. And then we go, those were the permanent points that are not likely to change unless Alice does some turnaround where she takes away all the rules and says you need to do a minimalist layout with minimum, you know, four points and <laughs> something like that. Then there's temporary points, the color green, memorabilia that you've collected or saved, it doesn't have to have anything to do with the story, by the way, or the, the photo. Airplane, be, none of this has to have anything to do with your story or your photo, by the way, in case you haven't figured that out from my layouts. Uh, airplane, B, gold, polka dots, enamel dots, blue and yellow together, sunflower, hedgehog, house, hand-colored image, duck, speech bubble, musical symbol, silver, puffy sticker, mouse, pineapple. Now, you heard like Disney over here. If you have mouse ears, that could be both. You could use it for mouse and uh, Disney. Unless there's no stacking of points, the, the play that we're going to do here, you stack points. Like one thing could like get you several points if it answers, if it ticks all the boxes. Uh, there, the original way that we played Calvin Ball, stacking of points was not allowed. So if you had 32 things or 62 things in your list, you have to have 62 things on your page. 
So that was kind of interesting. Since Alice has taken over uh, and it's moved over to Scrap Happy, um, you, you're allowed to stack unless it's a non-stacking day. So don't have to get into that because for purposes of our uh, challenge, it's stacking is allowed. Okay, so where was I? Um, Hand-colored image, duck, speech bubble, musical symbol, silver, puffy sticker, mouse, <coughs> excuse me, pineapple, elephant, handwriting, gnome, mushrooms, chipboard, 3D layered stickers, and I don't have very many of those. Um, I tend to, when they come in collections, I tend to use them quickly, um, but I made some, so I'm going to I'm going to count those, and you'll see that in a minute. Unicorn, snowflake, shamrock, dog, paperclip, sloth, and 10 plus flowers. Okay, so what I did when I was gathering the stuff for my tray, I kind of went through the list and put the stuff in here. It's not to say that I didn't miss anything. And what this allows me to do, instead of checking the list as I put my layout together, I'm actually just pulling things based on a design, based on the way I want the layout to look. So for example, in the original layout, let me pull that back up, there are these splatters here and here at these two corners. I need to use a stencil and I have this stencil that kind of looks a little like splatters. It's a Tim Holtz, it's called Speckles. And I have some black texture paste. So at the very end of all of this, um, so we don't have to wait for anything to dry, I'm gonna put my splatters in, kind of tucking them in behind all the other crap I'm gonna put on this page. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put that off to the side. Um, I have, there, as you'll notice in the original, there's this wood grain frame. I have this frame that I, uh, I die cut the piece that was in the center and it left me with this, um, this bit. And I'm going to... There's a wonky side because when I was cutting that on my trimmer, it moved it so thin. Okay, so I'm gonna have it come in here and let it come down there. I'm gonna cut that. And it is a an entire complete frame, but I'm only using part of it. So I've left, I'm left with this which I can use on another layout. So I'm gonna go ahead and put this behind um, up there, and I've got something that is just so cute, and I've been waiting to use it. Um, my good friend, Helen Parker, Island Scrapper Rockabilly Girl, however you know her, um, sent me a, um, just a, an amazing bag of goodies, um, like box of goodies one time. And it contained some stamped images. And one of the stamped images was a jar. And I love this jar. <laughs> and I colored, this is the hand colored image. I colored with, um, I have these 3D um, Jolly pens that are bright neon colors. And so I picked the neon green that would go with the neon green in my photo filter. And that I kind of want to do. i tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to move the Stay Wild, which is a puffy sticker, which gets me my puffy sticker point. I'm going to move that 
up so that I can tuck this kind of into my photo cluster. Maybe like that. Okay, and that needs some, or you know what? I could do it like this. or even over here. All I know is for sure, all I know for sure is I'm gonna use it. I like that. And still, it's going to be the pages, it doesn't matter to me if there isn't an element like that right here on the original. I'm still inspired by the original. Let me kind of have it, it might be offset a bit and I can tuck it in like that. Let me bring it back into place. There, I've got it on there and I can bring this back into place this way. Okay, that's good. Now, I'm going to do my title before I go much farther because uh, once I start piling on Calvin Ball points, I won't have uh, room. And what I like about the frame here is that it, it gives me kind of a base for, you know, Calvin Ball points. So my title's gonna be What Next? And I'm gonna start it in the solid part of the doily, realizing that it's gonna get to the lace soon enough. But if you start, the eyes are funny things, if you start reading something in a solid area, you can follow it. If I started it in the lacy area, your eyes would get all confused and not know to follow it, to, to connect the letters together into words. Okay, and that's my um, <laughs> eyeball lesson for the day. Okay, and I'm hoping I have a question mark. I don't see one, so I may need to make one. How do we do that? I could take the bottom part of an S and put a Okay, let's take an S and it needs to go it ha There's no way I can do that. Because it would be a backwards one. Um did it did it did it how about a I'm not gonna um, waste a lot of time figuring this out. How about I take this ampersand and I go there, I cut it here, and then I cut it here and here. And <laughs> I'm determined to do this here. Okay, and we put that right there. And you see right where I cut, it, it kind of, um, well, let me make a, yeah, I can, I can use one of these. That kind of shows, but I have some very tiny Calvin ball points in there that I can, 
put over that. I have little tiny uh, enamel hearts or something like that. So I really want that question mark because that's kind of how, that's Reese's expression in that, um, in that photo to me. Okay, so now let's have some fun. Um, I wanted to use, I'm gonna do larger embellish, well, okay, let's do one of those little um, enamel hearts. I'm gonna put put one right there and I'll put another one right there and it looks like as far as you know, underneath those hearts was a perfect, um, there's a little something or other that's hanging off of that dot. And it apparently doesn't want to come off, so I'm going to live with it. There. Slam that down. I'm going to put that back in my tray. Okay. Now, so I want to use some of the bigger elements first because it's easier to tuck small elements around and, and kind of hide them a bit when you've got the big ones on there. It's hard to put the big ones on last. I, um colored this, this is a navy blue uh, butterfly, and I colored the dots in this butterfly that I layered on top of it, that's from the Vicki Booten collection, uh, with the pen that was marked yellow. They've actually come out a little bit orange, but you know what? That is not gonna bother me. So I'm gonna put that there kind of in place of this cluster, which had a butterfly and some flowers. And you can see there's a little space between the butterfly and this stay wild. That's a perfect spot for a small, um, a small embellishment. Um, there's, okay, for example, I have, one of the things I have here is this little teacup. It's not gonna totally fill in that space, but when I put my, I could either put this small unicorn here and the teacup next to it. That's, let's do that. That's, these are the right sizes to kind of fill in that space without kind of adding to that whole um, jumbled junky look that you could get uh, with a Calvin Ball page. And, and trust me, I know that from experience. I, I do and, 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 and I have learned to love and embrace uh, some of those junky pages but I also appreciate something that keeps to a planned design like this lift. And I also, after, especially after a few Calvin Ball layouts, I really appreciate a, a good minimalist design. Let me get a little glue in the right place there and get that. This is taking a little bit longer than it needs to. And you can still read Stay Wild there. And I really like how the neon green kind of picks up on the Vicki Booten paper and this green that's in the, in the edit there. So uh, my cut file is gonna be this paper airplane and I thought I might use it as a, well, I could actually use it maybe to 
anchor something down here. So I'm just going to kind of sit it there for a second. I ha I'm going to do right up in here some of the sky-related things. Um, I have this little charm that has a rainbow shape, clouds, and it's gold. So it ticks all those boxes. I'm going to put the speech bubble kind of up here so that it kind of overlaps the frame so that you can see it's there. And then I'm going to glue this little charm down on the part that didn't cut right. So you get kind of that little scenario there. I have a tiny gold airplane sequin, and I like doing all the sky things in a single cluster that I don't like how that's curling. So I'm gonna try to get just a tiny bit of glue on there. And if I burnish it out, then it doesn't uh, look like I've got a glob of glue there. So I'm going to do the airplane right there. Just to kind of cover in case there is a glob of glue showing. Coax it down into there. And I've got a star. Um, and this is a satisfies my star requirement, but also my silver requirement. I don't have a lot of silver things, but if I make that into a little cluster, and just because it's neon, and I think it would look cute on here, I've got this little uh, asterisk that's from um, Bramble Fox. And I want to pair it with something weird. Okay, here is the cloud that I thought I'd put. This is a Bramble Fox cloud. And I'm going to put the glue on it and kind of smear it around just so it's tacky. Because again, I don't want that to look like a glob of glue there. So I kind of put that there, and that gives me some, a spot. This is kind of getting to be a, a junky looking cluster, and I'm not, I'm not liking that. I've got this, um, this snowflake, which is a rub on. And I'm going to maybe don't think I want to do that. I want to put something else more substantial there. I'm going to do the snowflake up here above the cloud. And I intentionally picked th this snowflake is from a very old basic gray uh, stick or uh, rub on booklet from 2011 and it's not perfect so the image it's very old <laughs> and I had one perfect one and then others that were not so great. So this one is not so great, but I'm going to keep adding to this cluster. This is an arrow and it's cut out of glitter paper. So it gets me the arrow point and the glitter point. And I'm gonna put something on this on this cloud. 
how about a dinosaur? A and what I'm thinking is these could all be things that this silly dog is imagining, right? And if you need to explain your Calvin Ball points, you can always include a child or a dog or a pet uh, in, in your photo and everything's explained. <laughs> it's, it's all explained from there. This is a sunflower and it's a half a sunflower. I'm looking for a spot that I can put it that kind of might set up another Okay, I like it there because then I can tuck some things behind it, kind of looking over it. For example, my little hedgehog here. And I debated whether to use, you know, I have Hetty and Harry, the, the uh, Dottie About Flare hedgehogs, and uh, they're in the fall uh, critters collection. There were a couple of little hedgehogs kind of peeking over but I've used those on other layouts. Okay, I have a sloth here that is from a sticker, a set of stickers that Liz Ketter sent me a couple years ago because <laughs> she liked to make fun of my Calvin Ball layouts. And she figured that a lot of things in the stickers would get me Calvin Ball points. And there have been, she had a couple um, uh, hedgehogs in there and I'm gonna put this maybe right there. And I do have a Paw print, it's my very last paw print, Adam. Um, and you know that I would leave it to last because it's gray. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's the color I was least likely to use. So that satisfies my flare requirement and my dog requirement if there weren't a dog in the photo, but there is. Okay, so I have this a musical note, and it's red, and there's some red flowers, and I keep covering up flowers, so I'll have to add some more in, I guess. Um, but you and I know that those are there. How about um, if Reese is dreaming of music, you think? Let's just, this is from a sequin set that um, Spiegel Mom Scraps designed for Redefined Creative, and that's where I got it from. So I have my torn ticket that's gonna kind of get stuck back over in here, but I'm gonna do the book first because it's bigger. I'll put the book there. I don't know where I got that book, um, but I don't use books on layouts very much. Um, let's see, I have a, a shamrock. that maybe could sneak in, how about right there? Yeah, I don't have to put it on top of the book. I'll kind of sneak that in and have just a little bit of it showing, just so you and I know it's there. 
And I have this little wood veneer camera, so it gets my camera point and my wood veneer point. And I'm gonna put him right there, just kind of tucked in over kind of close to the sloth. Now I have, there's a house point, and I have this flare with the cutest little lime green birdhouse, and the the um, rule does not say what kind of house. It doesn't say it has to be a house for people. It could be a beach house or a birdhouse or like this. So I'm gonna put the birdhouse right there. That seems like a good place to put my little, uh, these are some washi tape stickers. There's a, a little pineapple here and I can kind of tuck it under and have it coming out. And it even kind of overlaps onto my sloth. I'm beginning now to just kind of, <laughs> you know, okay, where do these things go? I have this paper clip, which satisfies my paper clip and my arrow point. I don't need to satisfy the arrow point, but it kind of looks like uh, something that would be appropriate to Reese thinking over what's next. So I'm going to just put it, I'm going to glue it up here. It's wood grain that kind of matches it's not sticking, so I'm going to put a little piece of foam back there. I've got to have room to stamp a couple things, because I think, and then there are a couple images I have stamped. I have this butterfly, which is made from, uh, there was some mixed media that I did, and it came out too neon, and I didn't want to use it, so I cut butterflies out of it. And this is the last one I have left. And it matches that green on there so well. And we we're kind of doing that all over. I thought I'd put it on even though I don't need the butterfly point. Um, I could maybe put it right here because I've got that bright neon green here. Maybe it could work right there. I just need to get rid of it. Don't you think? <laughs> so, uh, let's see. Here is some journaling. And I suppose I could kind of add it right here. And if I put it up on foam, I may be able to tuck some points behind it. We'll see how that works out for me. It says, Reese was freshly bathed, groomed, and shaved, and she was ready to take on the world outside. Bless her heart, she's so shaggy, and the um, she has to be trimmed to, you know, it gets matted, and she has to be trimmed so that her eye, she can see, <laughs> because it covers, covers her eyes entirely. I've got this bee. The B could fit right there. Not that it needs to. I already have the little airplane sequence, so I don't need this bag of sequins. I'll put that off the table. I have, let's see, do I need tropical leaves or flowers? I thought I might have put a, um, a sticker with, A hibiscus. There's the pineapple. I have some hibiscus like that. So let me dig in here and get an avocado sequin. And I'm going to put some others elsewhere. But let me get my, um, here's my little gnome and um, mushroom, and 
I didn't color those. I need a an elephant. And I have one um, I have one stamped. I can fussy cut it and I think I'm gonna cut it in half. And the same with the duck. I'm gonna do well actually let me see if I can this isn't all that difficult. I'm really not liking that up there. So I need something. I, I'm thinking maybe the um, splatters. If I can get the stencil down. Okay, so here's the, the elephant peeking out under there. And I'm gonna have the duck peeking out from behind. The duck, the only duck stamp or image I have is of that, uh, it's like a pool floaty. So I've used it on every, every layout to get the duck point. There, that's just gonna tuck in under. And I, I've got these mouse ears that could maybe be peeking behind the sunflower. I'm going to do this Bramble Fox Tropical Leaf. right there and i'm gonna add this neon because we have the neon green i thought we might want the neon pink no point for that but i think this is a good layout to use these on um let's see i need my duck coming out of there then i can put this let me get that and I have usually colored my duck, but I think on this layout, there's so many colors going on. It's kind of restful for the eye for there to be um, some black and white things. So there's the duck. And I'm going to take this guy and put it here just as part of this little, oh, oops, <laughs> he didn't stick. I'm just going to smoosh a bit of glue there and kind of rub it enough to get it tacky. Okay, now here's this airplane thing. And I've got my birthday mouse. I don't need the mouse, but I need the birthday hat that he's wearing. So let me um, stamp him. Either that or I have these little, no, I don't need the mouse. That's what I need is the birthday hat. Keep focused, Kathy. I'm just gonna kind of put it right there has absolutely nothing to do with anything, but it's cute. And I think I've said that every layout I've used it on because I think it's cute. <laughs> okay, we have enamel dots, which I keep moving this. I wanted to put one in the middle of the snowflake. Oh, it's stuck and it's not stuck in the middle. There, and then I'll add 
couple more. I still have to get that cut file on there. And I'm not seeing, you know, after I get the splatters on, I'll put the cut file and the dots and the avocado. I also have to get this ribbon on there. So what I've been doing when I don't have any particular, if I had a tag to do a little bow from or I could do that, but I've been stapling this putting a little glue on it and tucking it under something. And it's a good color for this layout. It's a good color for most of my layouts because I use a lot of teal. I'm gonna maybe stick it in under. Doesn't look like this is actually sticking. Does it have any glue on it? I might have just tucked it under there for placement and then not put any adhesive. So there we go. We have to let that grid paper show so that I get the grid paper point. Okay. And then this, the ribbons tails are just a little bit too long. Just have them out like that. Now, this is going to be the fastest um, stenciling in the history of stenciling. And in the original, the stenciling goes, or the splatters go over the paper there. So I'm going to do that too. Love the consistency of this black texture paste. It's yummy, very buttery. I don't want to overload it, but I do want to get some down in the corner of the page. Okay, there we go. I love that. Now, let's see how we can do this. I'm going to try to do it without um, messing anything up that's already there. I'm gonna tuck it in. Well, I'm not gonna do much tucking. I'm gonna do this, and then I just won't cover over that area. Kind of move it in towards it. and then out to here. Okay, it didn't go far enough there. So I'm just gonna lay it back down and do a little bit more without, while trying not to smush it down, but I did anyway. And I'm gonna add some more over here because the smushing didn't really harm things too much. I'll tell you what I'm going to actually do. <laughs> this is the riskiest thing. I'm going to try to get some in here. And I'm going to put it down kind of like that. There we go. And it's because it was standing up a little bit, those are a little bit higher and they have tails on them. And um, I'd, I don't like the shape of this one as much as I would like to, so I'm gonna come add some stuff over 
on that side there. I like that better and maybe some right there. Okay, that's good. <laughs> okay, now I use, save that to last. So I'm gonna move these things down. Oop, I didn't use the chipboard. I have to get the chipboard point. We'll go back over and and uh, and check the points. And I've got black on my hands. I need a baby wipe. And I can clean that that black um, texture paste stays nicely. Um, soft and it softens again in water so it things clean really well okay I'm going to put this XOXO like right there because it matches the color of that alpha so well. I've got a little bit of the texture paste on my H and my A, and I'm okay with that. I'll uh, see it even cleans up nicely from my my thing. Okay, let's do this. I'm gonna put a little bit. Oh my goodness! Dropped my glue. Can't drop your glue in the middle of a Calvin ball layout. Okay. This is crazy, and and no, I don't um, do or recommend doing every layout like this. But it's fun to do it every now and then. So I've kind of got it where it's bridging from back here up onto here, and I put a little glue on the tip. So it's kind of that paper airplane sort of a look. I've got a couple extra enamel dots that I'm gonna maybe kind of put around in oddball places. And that'll tell me where I also may want to put some sequins. So I've got an area here, and I'm going to put the avocado there. Cutest little sequins. Someone told me today that they had some, they got some avocado sequins with little toasts and I have not seen those. I I got mine at um, Spiegel Mom Scraps a, I don't know, maybe last year and I haven't seen them in the shop and I'm, I'm running low so I uh, I would love to get some more, so if, and, and I wouldn't mind having the little toasts either. I do like an avocado toast every now and then. Wish I had some avocados now, I'm hungry. Okay, this is a crazy layout. Okay, let's see what we have here. First thing I'm gonna do is count and see if you can see 10 flowers. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and then we have this sunflower, so that kind of maybe counts. Okay, so I'm satisfied. So green, we have that memorabilia, that's that ticket, and that ticket came from, nothing to do with the photo, it came from the um, retreat. It was the prize draw uh, tickets that we were given at the retreat for Scrapping Reflections last September. Okay, um, airplane is, there's one right here on the speech bubble. A B we've got down here, gold. The airplane is gold and there's gold around the little rainbow there. Polka dots, we got that 
guy, enamel dots here, here, and here, uh, blue and yellow together. Um, I, let's see, what am I going to count as blue and yellow together? Oh, here, the yellow dots on the navy blue butterfly that's on top of the other navy blue butterfly. Uh, sunflower right there, hedgehog right there, house is the little birdhouse on the flare, hand-colored image, I've colored in the jar lid on Helen's uh, stamped jar, duck I've got right here, speech bubble, that vellum thing right there, uh, musical symbol right there on the speech bubble, um, silver, the star on the speech bubble, Puffy sticker is the Stay Wild. Mouse is my little, there's my birthday mouse and there's my Mickey Mouse ears. Pineapple is this washi sticker. Elephant, little stamped guy right here. That is a lawn fawn stamp. And this, the gnome and the um, uh, mushroom are uh, Rosie Studios uh, field notes. Um, uh, so the elephant handwriting. I haven't written anything in my handwriting on here yet, but I can, let me do it after this has dried and I'll, uh, I'll just assure you that I am going to do it. I don't want to write it down here by the typed um, journaling. Okay, I'm gonna say, what can I get into next? There's my handwriting, <laughs> okay. Gnome, we've got uh, mushroom, we've got chipboard is the XOXO. 3D layered stickers is my uh, one butterfly on top of the other butterfly. A uh, unicorn, and it became a sticker as soon as I put a um, uh, an adhesive dot underneath it. It became layered as soon as I put this other butterfly on an adhesive dot on top of it. Okay, unicorn is right there. Uh, snowflake up there. Shamrock right here. And what I did for the shamrock is I... Uh, I, I'm able to bring shapes into my word processing system on my Mac, and it becomes a shape that you can snap stuff into. You can snap any kind of background into. And I took a photo of some tropical greenery around my old pool in Houston for an earlier layout, and I and it snapped into the shape of the shamrock. So then I cut that out and it becomes the shamrock point and also tropical greenery if I wanted it to. Um, dog, we've got a dog in the photo. And did I have a dog anywhere else? Well, I have the paw print. That would, that would satisfy the dog requirement if you didn't have a, a, you know, an ugly dog to take a photo of. Paperclip, we've got this right here. Sloth, we've got right here. And 10 plus flowers we have. Now we'll go back to the permanent points. Date my project. I've got March 2022 here. Uh, vellum is the speech bubble. Avocado we have right here. Camera we have right there. Washi, I've got this washi um, sticker of the pineapple. Uh, cut file, this um, this uh, airplane, paper airplane, is a cut file from uh, Creative Cuts Club from Christina Sword. Uh, stamping, I've got all kinds of stamping all over the place. The duck, the gnome, and the, uh, and the elephant, and um, Helen's jar. So if I didn't have any of those things, Helen's jar would satisfy the stamping requirement. Birthday, I have my little birthday hat on a mouse. Uh, tropical florals and leaves, I've got this one. And then those that are, you know, snapped into my image on the, of the, um, um, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, into my image of the shamrock. And then stencil, I used a stencil to do that splattering. Uh, arrow, there are arrows in the, uh, on the clip. 
cloud. I've got the Bramble Fox cloud here with a, <laughs> with a dinosaur on it. A uh, rainbow shape right here in my little charm. Uh, there's also a cloud there, so I wouldn't have had to use that. Uh, frame, yeah, I've got that uh, wood grain frame. Star, I've got my silver star right there. Grid paper, this lime green is grid paper. Butterfly, I've got a couple or three of those. Heart, um, I've got my little hearts right here on top of the, I need to put some glue, I guess, on top of the question mark, my custom made question mark. Okay, come on, stay there. If I press it down to help it make contact, it lifts up. <laughs> Okay, so heart, ribbon, I've got a little tiny piece of ribbon right there. Um, die cut, I've got um, die cut, where, what's die cut? Um, I, I cut that with a punch. This arrow is die cut. I cut that with a die. And I think that's the only, I'm lucky I didn't really check to see that. Everything else is fussy cut, I believe except that, so I've got that there. Flare, I have two flare, the dog paw and the little birdhouse. More than three pattern papers, I have one, two, three, four, five there. Uh, books and reading, there's a book right there. Um, Disney right here, glitter on the arrow, wood veneer uh, camera, dinosaur in the clouds, coffee and tea, that's the little cup that the um, unicorns are getting ready to drink out of, typewriter font, this font is called Typewriter from Hell, and I love it. It's, it's um, grainy, and it's, it's uh, all the letters are, are, you know, wonky, so it's cool, and doily. I added that, uh, that doily kind of to the design. So, that's my Calvin ball layout that has all 62 of these points and I'll get extra points for when I post it places and for having made the video that you've just watched. And I hope you guys have fun. I don't expect everyone to do all 62 of these, but see how many you can get on and see, see if you can get outside your comfort zone in putting all this random craziness on your page, even if it doesn't make sense. In my mind, a photo of a crazy dog getting ready to go off and do perpetrate some unknown foolishness um, is perfect for a chaotic, crazy-looking page like this. And so that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. Thanks for watching. Have fun with the challenge. And I can't wait to see what you come up with and to hear how you enjoyed or you rejected the notion of doing anything like this. Bye.